A game from Tosei and Bandai? There's some red flags. The thing is, Pocket Saurus actually demonstrates Tosei getting better. They're not good, and their art design is painful. But Pocket Zorus is a playable game? Really, it's a third tier platformer that nobody's gonna get super excited about. But if it was one of your three Famicom games, you'd probably be able to get some fun out of it. This game starts with a toy line. Pocket Zorus's was a line of miniature dinosaur figurines that transformed into stationary products. Bandai started making them in 1985, so there's some corporate synergy going on here. The game stars Shinji Hashimoto. He was a marketing guy who was the public face of Bandai at the time. Hashimoto moved over to Square in the early 90s, and he's worked on a lot of their stuff as a producer. It seems like most of his game input was in the marketing side. In the game, Hashimoto's been turned into a dinosaur by one of the evil Pocket Zoruses. So he hops into his time machine for some reason? It's not really well justified. Anyway, he has to travel through ten stages to collect swords that can be used to defeat the final boss. The game has a subtitle, Jiu Ken no Nazo, which could be literally translated as Mystery of the Ten King's Swords. So that's what you're collecting. On the title screen, you're given the option of I'm Tough Mode or Papa Mode. The manual tells me Papa Mode is easier, though I didn't notice any difference between the two. As you move and jump through the levels, you can knock out enemies with these boomerangs. Some of the enemies you defeat will leave behind these capsules, which you'll also sometimes see just sitting around. Touching them makes them pop up and reveal their contents, and then you'll have to collect them again. Honestly, it's kind of redundant. This thing is a flash bomb. You can carry up to three of them, and they show up in the upper left-hand corner. To use one, you have to press down and B. And that hits all of the enemies on the screen. The shield turns you into Super Zorus. It gives you the appearance of an armored suit, lets you throw more boomerangs which move more quickly, and that's it. Even though it's armor, it doesn't reduce damage or anything like that. It also goes away if you take too much damage. The 2x doubles your score for a short while. The question mark gives you a hint. Those aren't worth picking up since they mainly relate to a contest that ended over 30 years ago. H will refill your life bar. C gives you a continue. Those are surprisingly common. You might think that the diamond is just points, but they're actually used in-game at just a handful of places. One of those is when you see a 1-up pickup. They cost 5 diamonds. And to get across this water here, you have to pay 2 diamonds. Even though there's not many capsules before this point in the stage, and if you don't have them, then you're out of luck. You have to just jump across and take the damage. All of the pits that have liquid at the bottom, whether it's water or lava, you can jump into and bounce off of. A weird thing about this game is just how much text there is. Sometimes you'll stop and comment on the action, sometimes enemies will talk to you, and sometimes the game will just stop to quiz the player about what's going on. Get the answer right for a certain number of points. Points actually matter in this game because every 30,000 points you get a life refill. The stages have these sections where suddenly you stop platforming and jump into your time machine to act as a shoot 'em up. On those you can shoot forward and bomb, and the bomb winds up being pretty useful because it's the only thing that can stop this dinosaur that's blocking your path. I also noticed that you can make the screen scroll faster by pressing to the right when you're flying along in your time machine. At some points in the stages, lightning bolts will start dropping out of the sky. If you get hit by one of these, you get into a confrontation with the final boss. Defeat it and you get a code, 
And that code is entered at the end of the stage to give you a hint in that long-expired contest. There's a set of crossword puzzles in the manual, and the hints here are used to fill that out. I remembered hating Pocket Zorus. I mean, it's a Tosei Bandai game. Of course I looked at it and it went, ooh. Coming back to it now, I'm a bit more sympathetic. There's actually a lot of work put into the game systems on this one, and it controls just fine. The big problems are that the visual design is awful, and that the levels aren't well conceived. The way that some levels depend on you getting the right random pickups is a real headache. And the platforming is a bit muddled, especially with the visuals. There's also some obstacles that just don't have any reasonable way to avoid them. You'll either get lucky and dodge this foot, or it'll come down again, because the pattern's randomized. One of the craziest things in the game is when you do get a game over, it offers you the chance to challenge the final boss. You can't defeat it unless you've collected all the swords, but I thought it was kind of neat that they let players see what they're up against. Pocket Zorus is a good step up for Bondi and Tosei. You can see that they're improving. But even in 1987, there were better options. It's a good example of a game that's just too bland to be remembered.